and just a few lines of code. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can chat to one or multiple Pandas data frames with the help of Langchain and OpenAI's API. All you're going to need for this video is an OpenAI API key and then some basic knowledge of how a large language model works as well as some basic Python programming experience. And we're going to be covering this in less than 15 minutes. All right, let's start coding. All right, so let's get going. First, we're gonna have to pip install a few things. So I'm using Google Colab, but pip install langchain, pip install langchain, open AI, and then pip install langchain underscore experimental. Okay, and this will take a minute or two. So I'm gonna run this cell and I will be back once it's done. Awesome. And then now what we're going to do is we're bringing in a few imports. So from langchain underscore experimental dot agents, we're going to import in create pandas data frame agents. Okay. And then from langchain underscore open AI import chat open AI. Awesome. From langchain dot agents or agent types import agent type and then lastly import pandas as pd and then i do have one error over here let me just double check oh it's dot agents and then dot agent types Awesome. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our OpenAI API key. So I'm going to say import OS and set an OS environment variable. So environ and then put your OpenAI API key, open AI API key, and then paste in your API key right here. Mine starts with SK dash. Um, and uh, I'm going to paste mine in. I'm going to cut that out of the video and We'll be back once it is. But if you don't have an API key, they are free to generate and uh, this video won't cost you much. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data frame and I've already grabbed some of the data. You can either bring in a CSV file or what I'm going to do over here is use a dictionary. Now, what I'm going to be putting in here specifically is data for a hurricanes or not a hurricane but hurricanes that hit florida you know i, I had no idea what i was going to use for a data set and there's a hurricane hitting a florida tonight i live in florida so why not and we have names we have andrew charlie wilma irma and michael the years associated with it, the category of the storm luckily the storm hitting tonight is only a category one uh if it was higher it would be a much bigger issue uh, wind speed, pressure, damage that these storms have caused, and then the death toll associated with it. And uh, we'll run this over here. Awesome. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, data frame. So we'll say df equals pd dot data frame, and then just pass in this dictionary, which is under that data variable. And you'll commonly see df if you've not used uh, pandas before. Df is such a common term. All right, with that being said, let's just take a look at this really quick. I'm just going to do a head over here. And uh, we only have five storms, I believe, in this one. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so everything's going to show anyways with this head. So everything I showed, but this is just really nicely presented rather than this over here. Again, use whatever data you want. I'm using hurricanes in this video. I literally generated this uh, data from chat GPT. So I don't know if it's 100% accurate or not, but regardless, I uh, grab some data, throw it in here. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, follow with the video. And if you want to do grab this data for sure, I will post it in the a comment and I'll also have this on my website in the near future. All right. With that being out of the way, let's uh, create our large language model. This should be pretty easy. We've been following the series. So all we have to do over here is LM equals chat open AI. Then we set our model. So I'm going to say model equals GPT-4. And then... I'm going to set the temperature to zero. Often what I've seen is when I've set my temperature a little bit higher, I do get a little bit weirder results. And uh, so make sure you do put a temperature of zero on here. And uh, also 
if you're watching this in the future, there may be a better model. I tried this with a few different models. GPT-4 was giving me the most accuracy. So that's what I'm using for this video. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, I found it to work the best for me. All right, so now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna create our agent and we'll set this up. Now, I do wanna call out one of the parameters on here because I was getting a little bit of an error when I was prepping this video and I'll show you what was happening. So data frame, oops, agent. This is just a word full, right? Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in our LLM. Then we have to pass in our data frame. So DF over here. Uh, if you wanna see how this agent works and it comes up with its answers, you wanna put your verbose equal to true. If you don't care, you put it to false. Uh, I'm just gonna go through and see what it's saying. So I'm gonna put true and then since this is generating stuff, you're gonna have to put allow dangerous code to true. Um, this is something a little bit newer because when I was looking at source code for this, a lot of these examples online did not have allow dangerous code and I kept running into an error. So make sure you allow dangerous code equals to true. Otherwise this agent will not specifically work for the create pandas data frame agent. So you have to add that. And it's in the Langchain documentation um, just to show you what this looks like. I will load this up over here. So it's in the version two docs and it talks about this down below if you wanna read a little bit more, but regardless, you have to essentially mark this as true. Otherwise you're gonna get an error. And this was the error that I was getting. I'm just gonna show you guys here. Um, we'll just do like an agent test, so agent test, right? And I'm gonna remove this allow dangerous code show you and we get this error right agent relies on access to python tools arbitrary code and you have to and you'll get this link over here so you just have to accept this when you're building out your agent on here otherwise it is not going to work so now i have that and uh we can start working with this data set so um essentially you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this so for example if we want to start answering questions all we have to do is do agent.invoke and then just ask a question about it. So I'm gonna ask the first question, right? What hurricane caused the most damage, okay? And if we look over here, we're gonna have to look in this damage billion USD and we're gonna see Hurricane Irma in 2017 caused $50 billion in damage. So. That should be the answer. Let's run this with this agent.invoke. Uh, in the past, you used to see some code agent.run. That's now deprecated, so agent.invoke. So you can see finish chain, input what hurricane caused the most damage, output Irma, and you can see the thought process, right? This is why we have verbose equals true. To find the hurricane that caused the most damage, I need to find the maximum value in the damage billion column action, right? And then it shows the code, which is really awesome, right? And it says three Irma, and uh, what we can do is actually run this code if we really wanted to and check this out. So what we have over here is our data frame damage billion, right? Image max and grab the name. We're looking for this over here and we have Irma. Awesome. So let's go and answer another question, right? So one that I've seen before in some example code is people ask how many columns or, you know, how many rows are in data frame. Now, the easiest way that you can do this is really just do like a df.shape, df.shape, and that'll give you that result set, right? So I'll say five, seven. Now, if you go over here, right, we have five rows, we have seven columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can import it. But what we can ask also here is, for example, how many columns are in the data frame like this, right? And it's gonna go through this agent executor chain and it's gonna say how many columns in the data frame output being seven. And let's ask the other question, you know, how many rows are in here? How many rows are in the data frame? Run this again and we should have five as our answer, right? And we can even ask a little bit more complex questions. So what I'm gonna run this time, or invoke it this time, and I'm gonna ask this question, right? What are the top three hurricanes 
that had the highest wind speed, right? And again, this, this isn't the most difficult question. I mean, you can just have to manipulate your data frame a little bit to get the answer, but it's going to tell us the top three hurricanes with the highest wind speeds are Irma, Andrew, and Michael. And if we go down over here and check this out, let's take a look at our wind speed. So Irma, yep, Michael, and then we have Andrew, 165. What was the third one? Did it say it was Andrew? Irma, Andrew, Michael. So Irma, just double check this. Irma, yep, Andrew, and Michael. And it gave us that in order too, which I didn't even ask. Did I ask for that? I just said, what are the top three? So I didn't even ask for it in specific order, and it gave us the correct answer on that side of things. Again, a few lines of code, you could solve this yourself, but regardless, it's really cool to see how this agent works and can get you answers. And obviously this is a very simplistic data frame, right? We only have, it's a five by seven, five rows, seven columns, um, but I think it's awesome. So uh, what we can do now is we can actually compare two different data frames. So we're gonna say compare two different data frames. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in additional data to what we had. So this time we've expanded out the amount of hurricanes, right? Andrew, Charlie, Wilma, Irma, Michael, Katrina, Matthew, Dorian, Ian, and Nicole. The years are the same. Wind speed, pressure, damage, deaths are the same. This time I've also added brand new columns of affected areas, right? So we have the different areas that were impacted. We have Florida multiple times. Actually, all these storms hit Florida. And then we have the duration of days of the storm, right? 5, 6, 10, 14, 7, 9, 12, 9, 8, and 4. So a little bit more information, and this is a really awesome side of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another data frame. We're going to say df2 equals pd data frame. And I'm just going to pass in data again because this was just called data, right? And I probably should have named it something different, but that's okay. Now we're going to recreate our agent and I'm going to say agent equals. And essentially I'm going to copy the same code that we have over here, right? But there's one slight difference in the code. So instead of just putting DF over here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in both data frames. So we're going to say DF and then we're going to say DF2. And now we can compare both of these data frames once I run this. If we're going to still use our same large language model, GPT-4, temperature zero, we're going to have a robust true and allow dangerous code equals true. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to say agent.invoke. And here's the question I'm asked. What columns exist in DF2 that aren't in DF, right? So we're going to take a look at these columns and we should have two columns that exist in DF2 that are not. And it's showing you the code that's built out, right? And it says duration days in affected areas, right? So affected areas and duration days, that is correct. Now, what we're going to take a look at is the different hurricanes. So we're going to agent invoke once again, and I'm going to say, what hurricanes are in DF2 that aren't in DF, right? And it's gonna run this over here. And you can see why this is really awesome. Uh, you can compare two different data frames. Let's say you manipulate one data frame, you impute some values, you wanna go back and compare them. You could do that. I mean, there, there's really limitless possibilities, but regardless, uh, the hurricanes are DF2, they're not DF1, and then we have the five storm names over here. So I think this is awesome. And uh, let me just recap what we covered in this video because we did cover a lot, but I feel like we flew through this one in general. So what we did essentially is we brought in an experimental agent, which is create pandas data frame agent, right? Uh, make sure you bring in your open AI API key. Now I essentially had everything over here in a dictionary. You can import it in a CSV and then turn it into a data frame, but make sure we do have that data frame over here. And then I created my LLM. I'm using GPT-4. I found it to work the best. In the future, that might not be the case as new models are developed and launched, but right now GPT-4 works great for me. So what we're doing, we create our create pandas data frame agent. First thing we have to do is pass in our large language model. Then we pass in our data frame or multiple data frames, right? Remember I showed you, this is just DF over here. Down below, I passed in DF and DF2. If you wanna see the thought process behind it, which I highly recommend, especially as you ask a little bit more complex queries, 
Um, I would say verbose equals true and then allow dangerous code. You have to accept this. So you'll allow dangerous code equals true. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get this data frame agent to work. And then just to ask it questions, all you have to do is agent.invoke. And then you ask your question in natural language over here. It converts it essentially to code uh, that is going to look at your data frame and give you that result back in natural language. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the crate pandas data frame agent. If you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading multiple videos every single week right now, really focusing on large language models as well as the open AI API. Now, if you want to learn even more, I have a playlist down below as well as a few other videos that I highly recommend that you check out and you can watch it right over here as well.